Дуже дякую. Thank you so much. Dear friends, I thank you, first of all, for being here with Crimea, with Ukraine. And I would like to begin my short speech with a quote. It's a short quote to the memories of an older person about childhood. Let me read it. Soviet soldiers came uh, at night on the 18th of May 1944, breaking our doors with guns. One of them beat my mom and, sa and shouted, we'll throw you away. We were put to the trains and brought to Uzbekistan. They threw away the bodies on the way. We were all very sick. We started to leave in barracks, six, seven families per barrack. People were dying, starving. My father couldn't find anyone to bury the dead. This is the fragment from the story about the Russian deportation of Crimean Tatars, which is very typical, because these horrors, these atrocities were really typical. This witness, uh, these are the same witnesses of the deported who survived, how the bodies were thrown away, the bodies of dead children were thrown away because the train did not stop to bury people, how the families died of starvation um, along, uh, in the steppe. Approximately 46% of Crimean Tatars died then. They could not survive through this Soviet genocide. But this quote, which I read, belongs to a special woman, Vajia Kashka, who is the human rights activist, the veteran of Crimean Tatar movement. Living through an awful deportation in childhood, she still managed to come back to her motherland and she devoted her life to the fight for the rights of Crimean Tatar people. And when she got older, she died after she was detained by Russian law enforcement authorities during the strike, during the manifestation in 2017 and she felt bad and the emergency could not bring her to the hospital. She died on the way there. Her, this vicious circle was over in her life. First the Empire soldiers went through her childhood, deprived her of her motherland, and then the same people occupied her Crimea again, made her hurt, taking her life. But in fact, the life of the whole country took place like that, of many Ukrainians, of all of us. The empire would never stop if it is not stopped. The Soviet and Russian occupation of Crimea in 2014 has become the beginning of the new crawling war against Ukraine, when they want to kill not only the people, but their identity. Dozens of Crimean Tatar activists, uh, the grandchildren of those who lived through deportation, are now in Russian jails, just because they are who they are, because they want to live on their land and they stand for this right, and even without any weapons. This is where russification of educational institutions started. This is where militarization of children started, forced deportation of the underaged children, and the illegal adoption, in fact, kidnapping of our children. This is how Ukraine is shouting uh, to the world, and this is why we created the coalition on the comeback of Ukrainian children, because one country cannot cope such, an, uh, the ac such actions. Tomorrow, during the opening of the fourth summit of First Lady and Gentlemen, and I invite you to go there, you will hear from the uh, first hands uh, such Crimean stories, how it is to live through your own childhood under occupation. And again, it repeats awfully, the generation of 80-year-old are telling about their childhood in deportation, and the generation of today's children is telling about their childhood in occupation. Those are not just patterns of history. This is the wheel destroying humans' fates. And this is the wheel which is already rolling by the will of Russian Empire, as it was never punished for its Soviet crimes. And the criminals who were committing this forced deport deportation 
they did not have their own Nuremberg court trial. That is why this wheel is still rolling on. The deportation of Crimean Tatar this year is 80 years, dating back 80 years. Today in the morning, together with our foreign guests, we opened the memorial for the victims of this genocide. But I am sure that the most important memorial, the monument to these awful uh, events, should be truth. We should disseminate the truth as vast as possible for about the uh, residents of Crimea and what Russia has committed and going on to commit. We know about that in Ukraine, but it's important that maybe the whole world should get to know about that. For centuries, the world was consuming Russian vision, rewritten history, and that is why Truth is decolonized history, the history in the eyes of not the colonizers, but the ones who they oppressed. Many peoples have already decolonized their history, and now Ukraine finally chose it right for voice, which is free from Russian narrative. That is why we launched such an initiative, which has the name of Global Coalition of Ukrainian Studies. And just uh, let me tell you a couple of words about what that is. We have Ukrainian studies, the studies of Ukrainian uh, science in many universities of the world. Those are academic communities. And now we are really interested so that this network to be expanded. So the initiative of the creation of the global coalition of such studies was presented in July this year in Washington. In my opinion, it's an important educational partnership, academic partnership, which has to help dissemination of truth about Ukraine and Crimea in particular, because we'd like to develop Crimean Tatar studies within the Ukrainian ones, because the people of Crimea have the right to be known. That is why Crimean Tatar studies have to be part of Ukrainian studies, as well as Crimea is part of Ukraine. Soon, the coalition will have its own project office, and meanwhile, the Crimea platform, which has become the key political tool to remind about the necessity of deoccupation of Crimea, should become the tool of accumulation of efforts for decolonization of perception of the peninsula, the perception of Crimea and Crimean residents. Here we have the representatives of the President of Ukraine in Crimea, and also the Special Commissioner of the President of Ukraine on Sports and Education, the representatives of Ukrainian Institute, the Ministry of Education, who are working together so that we could form that coalition and to involve the necessary resources for the development of already existing Ukrainian studies and to create the new ones. This work really needs huge efforts and resources. We hope that next year the countries which are the participants of the Crimea platform will also be involved in this work. Today my speech at this platform has a very specific objective to support these efforts and uh, to call on you to join. The ways and formats of support can be diverse, and now they are being developed and soon will be presented to the country's participants of Crimea platform, so that during the next summit we could see already the outcomes of this work, strengthening of Ukrainian studies in the work and foundation of new ones, and the emergence of new projects, internships, and uh, exhibitions devoted to the real face of Crimea, esteemed friends and foreign friends. This cooperation for us is so important, as truth is important not only for us. It is important for the whole world, for each country and culture which doesn't want to be under oppression, cancelled uh, by someone's aggression, for everyone who doesn't want totalitarianism at their land. Truth and the knowledge of truth is the freedom and security. So I call on the world, get to know, disseminate the truth about Crimea, about Ukraine, so that this truth could save you as well, maybe. Thank you.